controlling the formations is something that I want to talk about right now. Uh, I mentioned that we were setting the selection to delete particles, but actually the main reason to have a soft selection is usually to affect how the formations work. Let's say that we want to take the age and lifespan gradient again, as before, but this time we want to apply a twist modifier to our particle system, a lot that same scene as before. And um, I want to uh, deform the particles according to their age or according to their velocity, but in this case we'll do age. First thing I want to do is go to a frame where I have a reasonably large bounding box for my particle system and I'll press the button in the PFT loader that says set the modified gizmo size to the current bounding box. Uh, the reason to do this is um, the bounding box is constantly changing when the particles are deforming and we don't want our modifier uh, context to be constantly scaling with particles coming and going. Uh, so we're going to freeze it to this size and if I apply now a twist modifier on top of the stack uh, and change the twist parameter, my particles get twisted correspondingly our uh, the length of the simulation. So they're coming and twisting like a tornado and then dying. Awesome. But now I want them to actually not twist when they're young and start twisting later. So underneath this I'm going to add the magma and they'll perform exactly the same steps as we did before for the uh, age uh, color. In this case I'll be outputting the selection but the rest will be the same with the shift A divided by shift L convert the one to float, convert the other one to float, and now I have zero to one, zero in the beginning, out there, and now uh, if we take a look, we have very little twist in the beginning, and then as they get in order, they get more twisty, and then get very twisty in the end, and then they die. And once again, we can add an exponent or a curve. Curve in this case would be much better, say uh, um, I need a function curve, I'll open the curve, go to a frame where I see more of those particles, somewhere around here, for example, and now I can say, okay, I'll make this a Bezier uh, corner, and I'll sh shift the curvature of this, so there is pretty much no twisting going on here for uh, a while. I'll probably even introduce uh, another point and set it down to zero. So we have no twist, no twist, they're going down, and then suddenly uh, from here on, uh, we can start going up. So uh, let's select this, this here corner, here is the tangent, and then you change and you get no twist, no twist at all, and then in the end, just before they die, they do a little bit of a twist and, and they're gone. This is very powerful uh, because it means that you can simulate your particles any way you want and then show it to your uh, customer, director, whatever, and then he says, I love it, but I want them to be a little 10% more twisty here. Instead of going and re-simulating things and then you need a vortex force and then you're dealing with forces and control is in simulation is usually uh, difficult to achieve and you have to re-sim until you reach the right result. Here we're working history independently on each frame individually, just drop a modifier on top, add freeform deformations, add uh, bends and twists and uh, tapers and whatever and achieve exactly the result that is expected from you with already pre-cached particles. So all the channels are there and all you do is shape the final result. 